Hi guys! Um, so yeah, so it's almost Halloween time and we're going to be doing some very exciting stuff this year. So um, to get ready and in the mood for all of this fun stuff before I go out tonight, I'm just going to do some interesting makeup. But um, before we're going to do that, I'm going to show you how to apply a simple prosthetic as, uh, as a wee nose. So we're going to be sticking this on my face and uh, after that I'll do a full tutorial on how to turn this into a uh, interesting conjuring nun so this will be what we're going with okay so to begin with our foam latex noses are very comfortable it's foam latex so if you are latex um, intolerant or have allergies um, better not to go and wear this because you might <laughs> you can stay there and laugh at me <laughs> oh. okay if you have any latex allergies foam latex might not be the thing for you but if you are okay with latex you'll be all good so this is a wee nose it's got pretty good edges not all prosthetics have really fine edges but I will run you through what to do with those edges as well so this wee nose will fit pretty much quite all right on my nose um what i do like to do especially if it fits well i might just trim that fine little edge around the nostrils you can just do that by just simply plucking little bits away in general having a rougher edge will make it easier to blend it doesn't mean rougher in thickness it means rougher in like kind of zigzaggy-ness if that's a word <laughs> all right so we've got that trimmed up a little bit better and now i'm just going to prep my skin a little bit to um to make this adhere a little bit better now most of the time prosade will stick pretty well to my skin some people don't do well with prosade my skin is fine with it. I tend to use these little alcohol swabs. They're great to get your pores all cleaned up and make sure that it will stick very nice. Um, in general, prosthetics don't sit very well on top of foundations or any makeups, so it's better to just get very clean skin. So, wipe my nose up, checking again that fit seeing how that will go and that will be just fine I would say and now it's time to apply some prosade now prosade is my preferred choice of adhesive for foam latex prosade is a medical acrylic adhesive you can get it at the body effects shop it comes in either a liquid form or it comes in a cream so the creams come in all sorts of sizes. We tend to go through a lot of this stuff, so I work with the big boys. Um, I love working with the creams because the cream is good to um, work with uh, for blending edges, but also what tends to happen when you go anywhere with a, a bottle of liquid adhesive, it's gonna spill. So cream, don't do that. So cream is my preferred choice especially if you work with some clumsy artists I use a um, old brush and I'm just going to adhere and put the rosade right in this nose all the way so I'm just gonna fill this up now I'm not gonna do the whole lot I'm gonna keep a half a centimeter of the edges free. If I would glue this all up straight from the get-go, what would happen is that these really thin edges, they might end up falling over. And if they fold over, it's gonna be really hard to get back to a straight edge. So we wanna have it nice and smooth, a thin layer, keep that edge open. And prosade tends to go from white to more of a clear. And so once it's clear, you're good to go. If you want to have a really strong bond, I could choose to put a little bit of an adhesive on my full nose as well. But I know I'm not going to wear it for a very long time, so I will be okay with just having it on there. 
So at this point, I'm just going to hold it on both sides. I can still hold it as well because there's no glue on those edges. I'm gonna just gently place it on top of my nose, checking the mirror if I'm doing all right. And I'm gonna stick that down. And there we go. Making sure it sits nicely in those nostril butts. Sticking it down. Okay. So from here, we can start blending these edges. Now, if they're really thin edges, you can use some prosthetic blender. They will kind of dissolve the edges. Or you can work just a little bit of prosade on those edge rims. And also, because we have that little half a centimeter left, we're going to work that away into the skin. So gently working away and all by pushing the prosthetic down you can apply your prosette right in those edges pushing it back try not to push any creases in it because that would defeat the purpose and you can easily go over the edge just a little bit it won't be a problem. In the end, it will all blend away. Very nice. So now with my thicker prosade, I'm just gonna work that edge a little bit more. And basically just filling the gap between the prosthetic and the skin. So with any kind of prosthetics that we make, we definitely aim to have the finest and thinnest edges. However, it doesn't always happen. Some molds don't come up super thin and they would be like our B grade prosthetics. And most of the time, those are the ones that I end up using, so. I do a lot of edge blending. Now, if there are really thick edges, which does happen at times, we recommend using Effect Space, which is a product that we've created. It's a thickened latex, again, latex product. Can be used for um, kind of uh, to create wounds or effects directly onto the skin, or you can use it purely for blending those edges. And it blends beautifully. Latex can be a bit strong in smell of ammonia, so working around the eyes can be quite sensitive. Um, for me, I am used to working with a lot of um, latex products, so latex doesn't seem to have as much effect on me anymore as it used to. Not sure if that's a good thing. Okay, but the fact space is definitely no when to stop because if you keep working it, it starts to crumble up and it might end up destroying your whole design. So, done enough there. So, when the prosate is drying out, all I have to do now is just powder it off and uh, I'm ready for painting. So, not that hard to put a prosthetic on. 
just give it a go and can't go that wrong let's go on with the next part of the tutorial so just applying that translucent powder on it close my eyes because I get powder in my eye there you go Now we know it's no longer sticky and we're good to go. Oh, I can tell this is going to be a great look for me. Um, this makeup is not going to be okay without some contact lenses. So I will have to do some contact lenses. Now I'm not the best in putting in contact lenses, but I'm going to give it a go myself today. Make sure your fingers are clean. Now, for this makeup, I'm going to be using these beautiful white contact lenses. White, yellow contact lenses, I have to say. Um, I think these are avatars. And they will work perfectly. So yes, put contact lenses in before makeup, so makeup won't necessarily run into your eyes when you start crying really hard. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I got them in my eye. Oh my god, that was a struggle, but I managed. And look at me. Yes, that's the look we're going for. So we got our eyes, we got our nose. Now it's time to transform all this beautiful skin texture to Miss Velak. So what I'm going to be using is um, this Fab White. And um, I will be using a Kabuki brush. Fab is a glycerin based uh, um, face paint. So trans... Fab is a trans... Ah! You make me nervous, Jules. Sorry. Alright, so Fab... Fab is a glycerin-based makeup uh, face paint. So dilute it with water, mix it up in a kabuki brush, and apply it pretty quick because otherwise it's still going to be kind of streaky. So we're going to work fast and get that whole face white. And I'm just gonna go straight over the prosthetic. And I'm gonna work fast. Working in circular motion can help to get a nice even finish. But we probably wanna layer this on quite nice and thick. Now in certain areas, I know it's gonna be a lot of black, so I'm not going to put a whole lot of white there because if I put black on top most likely it's going to end up grey and that's not what I want oh why it's such a flattering colour oh my god it's going to make all my wrinkles stand out it's awesome So, I ended up sculpting this nose for this particular character, knowing that this actress is definitely not wearing a prosthetic nose. She's just got a pretty impressive nose on herself. So, you could create this look without a prosthetic nose, with some clever highlighting and shading. However, it's more fun if you can add some bits and pieces to your face. No, Velik doesn't have any eyebrows, so bam, they are gone. I could choose to block them out, but I know I'm going to put a lot of black in that area as well. So. I'm not going to be too worried about them. Of 
us also check on what you're wearing because this will not be my final costume so I know all of this will be kind of covered so I don't need to worry about my neck just a little bit underneath my chin but it's pretty much all gonna be gone making sure we got it nice and even so the problem with white often is if you go back over it whilst the first layer is dry it starts pulling it away so therefore if that happens you just really gently have to tap that color back on luckily this foundation is not necessary needing to look super pristine because we're going to break it up anyway there we are uh, hello great look now we're going to move on to some black so uh, my preferred black would be tag black or um, our own brand face art black same thing both good to work with um, again a water-based paint it's a very black black so be wary of that I'm just gonna use a big kind of round powdery brush lathering this black up and I know around the eyes I want to have it very black black so I'm gonna start off with that this makeup we don't want to be too precise doesn't have to be too clean which is really nice so now I can move into a more of a softer powder brush and I can soften the edges of this and just gonna gently stipple and break it up how's that for a smoky eye Now my other preferred product that I tend to work in most of my Halloween makeups is Starbland, which is pretty much a massive black eyeshadow powder that I prefer using dry. You can use it wet, but once you start using it wet, it's going to be hard to activate it as a dry powder again. So I use it dry for blending out these kind of aging. It can definitely help to get that really soft edge and that smudgy look going. Now this is also going to be the part where I'm going to be going over the edge of our prosthetic. And that will help blend that in. To make her a little bit more fierce looking, you can blend into just a little bit into these kind of frown lines. Helps if you can emphasize what you've got already. So if you got some, frown them and then match it up. Really, we just don't want to look all too pristine because you kind of want to have a bit of a mottled look about it. It's nice to hollow out certain areas a bit more. Sinking in those temples. And of course work that nose as well. Don't want it to stand out like that crazy. So. Just slightly emphasize certain lines.
quest, it always helps to have a good reference of the character that you want to go as. Or you can just give it a bit of your own twist, which makes it more your own. Definitely has that kind of little dimple in her nose. The nice thing about foam latex is that after a while you don't really feel like you're wearing it anymore. It takes on your body temperature and it just makes it very comfortable. Might bring back a little bit more white just right on top of that nose because does end up fading a little bit in color as the prosthetic is made out of more of a yellowy color and of course my face is not so and at this point it's really all about breaking up So softening up some of the black now again. Let's see. Now for hollowing up my cheeks, I'm just going to put a little bit of black on a sponge. It gives me a little bit more um, reach in one go instead of going with a small. brush it just goes a little bit faster it's nice when you can suck in your cheeks and know exactly where to go and again breaking that up Now on my lips, I'm going to be using first some um, some lipstick. I've got some Miron black lipstick. So I'm going to apply that using a wee brush. Again, this is not going to be a pretty look. Just applying some lipstick first because putting black face paint on your lips is not necessarily the nicest. It can be quite drying. Yeah. On top of that, we can work some black powder. And this black heart, you can take her there as well. Always wanted to have bigger lips, so there we go. Sliding some more lines. All right. Time to break it up a bit more with one of my favorite brushes and cut.
Time to break it up some more using my favorite brush, which is just like a little hardware brush. Chop off the bristles, chip brush you got. Um, using my black. Now this is gonna be interesting because normally I do this on other people. Um, now I'm gonna do it on myself. And um, I'm gonna keep my eyes closed, or I try to. Well, let's start with the mouth. So, flicky brush it's for flicking this color. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I'm gonna close this eye. And close this eye. That one. It's always fun. I love flicking. <laughs> I just sit there. <laughs> All right. Blending some back, but it's pretty effective. Let's have some more. So yes, be careful with using this brush when you're having contact lenses in or having your eyes open it's very easy to put this in your eyes don't do that let's break it up some more Get a bit more chin going on. It's quite a lot. Right, um, add more black inside the eyes. I'm just gonna put a little bit of black in here. Try to get rid of this fleshy color that's going on. Now the final touches. We're going to add a little bit of um, veining or crack. So, using a very thin little brush, this is like a number two round brush. A little bit of black, maybe a tiny hint of white, so it's not too black black. So it softens it up just a little bit. I'm just going to add some little cracky bits. Soften that up a little bit. Uh, just by gently tapping over it, you can fade out the edges a little bit. Make it a bit more fadey and less intense. Working any kind of lines over any edging of your prosthetics can help give the illusion that it blends better. So if you're not super happy with your edging, do that.
goes here. A little bit more. Have you? Yeah. Right there. Yeah, why not? Let's make them with bigger lips. Ew. Ew. Oh, my teeth look so yellow right now. So yes, so don't be too precise with this kind of makeup. A little smudgy in there is all good. This is also great makeup if you're gonna have a big night. You know by the end of it, you're not gonna look that great. With this kind of makeup, you don't start off looking great in the beginning, so it's great. What do you think, Jules? Am I hot? You like it? Yeah. Real hot. You gonna take me out now? Okay. Yeah? You should get changed first. Yeah? Alright. They can't hear me, by the way. Huh? People can't hear me. They can't hear you? No. Oh, but I can hear you, babe. Yeah. Alright. Um. You can finish this kind of look off with maybe some uh, fake teeth, some I prepared earlier. These are just some teeth that I still had lying about. You can have a look, see if it fits. Let's try that with some costuming. So, I put on my costume, add a bit more color in my neck, and a little bit on my hands. And I'm gonna put on my teeth, and it's time to hit those streets. <laughs>